Welcome to the Manny Perez Show, the show that covers, works on, and solves our community's issues. Yes, we can with the Manny Perez Show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Manny Perez Show. I'm Manny Manuel Perez, your community leader, democratic leader in Queens, and entrepreneur dedicated to helping people like you, like me, like my neighbors, be successful and create better futures for themselves. Today, our journalist Gabriela Scanio is not with us because she's working on her future. And the topic for today actually is how to overcome hate. And yes, hate is something that we have all around us right now. We've got crime waves. We've got prejudice. We have the problems with, uh, oh my God, <laughs> I'm thinking police. And yes, some people hate the police. And some people want more police. And guys, we have international situations that are also affecting us. And all of that is surrounded by hate. Some of those things are hate crimes. And hate crimes, oh, you know, it's something that, yes, in my childhood, I did face up to hate crimes. I'm Hispanic. And even though you see me as somebody that might look like I'm Italian, Jewish, or something else, the minute they knew my name, and I was very proud of saying Manuel Perez, um, things would change. And what can you do? That was a reality. Then there were bullies. When I was growing up, bullies were common in schools and in some neighborhood situations. Each one of those persons had hate within them, and they also had fear. Because as a coach, I know that hate and fear, they're side by side. Sometimes one of the two of them is kind of hidden. You can't tell very, very clearly that that person is hating everybody else. But if you listen, you listen to their words, you see what they're doing, you realize, hey, there's no love there. There's no caring. There is no sense of community. And, you know, in politics, we're seeing it also. We're seeing all these campaigns where people are bad mouthing other people. And sometimes they'll do it very elegantly. And other times, not so much. But in truth, a lot of times people are just focusing on one issue, one topic, and saying, this cannot be. Uh, we can't accept this. We demand. And other big words. And hello? We're in the United States. And the United States is a country where the law is in charge. And yes, we are changing some laws. I mean, we, we did make mistakes with some of the laws we recently passed, and we discovered that they didn't work very well. But that's what democracy is all about. In democracy, the idea is that we are a community, and everyone has to do with what is decided. And in theory, we are all equal. And yes, there is somebody making a decision, but the idea is that the decision is coming down from what we are saying and we're thinking. Now, in your life, it should be the same if you're in a democratic system, that there are many things going on in your life and they're all influencing what you decide. But many people want it to be this way. I want this. And then I change everything else in my life just to get that one thing I want. Now, I know that when I was young, I did that a lot. I 
if I wanted to go out with someone, oh my God, it was my decision. And yes, was <laughs> I, I bothered people, I, I know. Sometimes I wanted to go out with someone, the person wasn't answering the phone and I was calling every 10 minutes. Not very nice on my part. And yes, did I have sometimes anger because, uh, and I'll keep it in the romantic area, because someone didn't want to go out with me, they were going with, out with somebody else. Did I have anger? Did I have hate, maybe, or jealousy? All I know is that I was very annoyed that, that person wasn't going with me. When we're teenagers, especially, we tend to focus a lot on what we want and what we're thinking. As we become parents, yes, what as a parent we think we do tell our children, but at the same time, as our, we learn because we care about our children to pay attention to what our children are saying. And as we grow in our community, we start paying attention to what our neighbors are saying. And we start working together. And that's the magic of democracy. That's the magic of the system that the United States has in us as an ideal. But hate and fear can affect us. It's true. Because when I'm scared, it's very natural for me to think of me first. Let me get out of here. I mean, hey. Days ago, somebody was in an accident with three passengers, and the, everybody, you know, the passengers were injured, and the person ran out of the car, leaving them there to, to die if they died. Ran out of the car and ran away. That's fear. I know. Could it have been hate? Don't know. But I know there was fear because the person ran away. In your life, if there's something that scares you, often it's coming because somebody else is either abusing or hating or something else. We have a lot of gun crime right now, a lot in New York City. Statistics zoomed up, and there are a lot of politicians and other things that want to blame one group or another group and uh they yeah of course there's always the one that says there ought to be a law there is a law guns are illegal in new york city i'm going to repeat it guns are illegal in new york city except for the police and sometimes military with permission so if guns are illegal why are we having street crime with guns how is how is it possible that in this wonderful wonderful country on mother's day somebody showed up with a gun at a party where the person seems to have been one of the guests and just started shooting i mean no logic there how is it possible that people are shooting in the direction of babies and strollers, of children, and they're getting injured? And they're shooting innocent bystanders. Because that's one of the worst parts about you know, some of these shooters. They're shooting the wrong people. But once again, <laughs> shooting anyone is a crime, and I don't agree with shooting anyone. I don't agree with violence. I, I understand. Sometimes you have to be violent. Oh, sure. I mean, if you're in a situation where your life is in danger, I understand you defend yourself as you can. And I know that when I was a child, I mean, bullies all over the place. I was short chubby, Hispanic, and all these kids bigger than me, they pick on me, so I just fight back. I learned how to fight. 
Did I end up bloody and hurt? Yeah. But at least I got them to stop. So hate on their part, I had to face it off, not by hating them, but by just learning to defend myself and by acting smart, being smart about it. You say, what's so smart about getting beat up? Well, if you set up the situation so there's lots of witnesses, that bully actually was seen as a coward because the bully was picking on the short, fat kid. And uh, that's just part of growing up for me. And my suggestion to you is if you're afraid of something, think, how can I handle the fear? Get in touch with me. Get in touch with this program. We're here for you. I'm here for you. Manuel Perez. I don't agree with violence. And you should not agree with violence either. Now, not agreeing with violence does not mean that I have not been violent in my life and that I would not stand up to someone who's trying to be violent with me. It's different. I might not agree with it, but if I have to do it, I actually had to learn as a kid how to fight because I had to stand up to the bullies who thought that the short, chubby, Hispanic was an easy target. Now, I was smart about it. Whenever they wanted to pick a fight with me, I had lots of people around me. I had lots of witnesses. Why? Because even if they won the fight, because, yes, sometimes they were twice my size, uh, hey, there were witnesses that they were bullies and that they were fighting someone that had no chance of winning. But, boy, did I show them that I was not going to be a pushover. Because fear is something that we shouldn't accept either. Fear is a warning system. Fear is, it, it warns you, hey, just like a fire alarm, there's a fire going on. Okay, so the first thing I look at is what, if it's a stove top, top with, with burning food, I just turn off the stove. And I might put out the fire too because sometimes it's, it's easy. But I act intelligently. I think you can do the same. And that's the objective today. We're talking about overcoming hate. And yes, overcoming fear. So we're taking a break now. And uh, I'll be right back. And we will continue talking about this topic. And hey, I hope you'll be with me, Manny, Manuel Perez, your leader here in Queens, and Julio and America TV Productions our engineers. Thank you. I'll be right back. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Manny Perez Show. Yes, I'm Manny Manuel Perez, your community leader, democratic leader, entrepreneur here in Queens, dedicated to your success, to entrepreneurs being successful, and just to everybody that works with me. Now, today we're talking about of overcoming fear. And I understand. There are many people who are afraid in our community right now. In the first part, we discussed it a little bit, and now we are going to go into it a little bit more. When you're afraid, it's very easy to fall into hate. Because there will always be someone telling you that it's somebody else's fault. Right now, one of the sources of fear in our community is our countries of origin. Many 
of our countries of origin are having severe pandemic problems. People we know are dying from COVID. And it's very easy to listen to a friend or someone say that it's so-and-so's fault or that we should do something to help. And we, out of fear, we either go into hate to the person that might be at fault, and then we start acting in a reflex manner, just almost being violent with our words and certain actions. Or we continue with our fear and we do things that might not actually help anyone. Sounds logical, but or it might sound illogical, but we do things just because it feels good or we're told something that makes us feel better, so we just repeat it. That's what happens many times during disasters where people will say, I'm collecting money to help, and actually they're collecting money for themselves. That's why we should support organizations that are known to help people, that have a track record. The American Red Cross, all of the National Red Cross or Red Crescent uh, organizations, hey, they have a track record. We have to be careful. There is corruption and there is fraud. Should you get angry at the frauds? Eh, I don't know if it's useful. They're only interested in money. They don't care about you. But you have to act intelligently. Do you have to hate yourself because you made a mistake? Nah, you made a mistake, learn. That's all it is. But don't let fear or hate control you. Right now, this political campaign, I've heard so many things that are hateful and that are meant to inspire anger or fear or hate in people sometimes even jealousy. Why should so-and-so have something that you don't have? Well, I agree. If they'd have something that I don't have, what I've got to do is figure out how to get it. I will work for it. Why? Because I'm an entrepreneur. I believe in working for things. I've been a public employee, a private employee. I've been in nonprofits. Guys, there's nothing impossible if you plan for it. Will it be quick? No, sorry. Won't be. But we're lucky to live in New York City. New York City helps migrants, helps citizens, helps residents, helps everybody that lives in this city. I mean, right now, we're even offering vaccines to tourists that come to our city. And some people might say, why are you giving vaccines to tourists when there are so many people in our community that are not vaccinated? Well, actually, if tourists are vaccinated, that's protection for us. But the other thing is, a lot of you, and yes, I'm saying you, people watching this program, a number of them, and I think a lot of them actually are afraid of needles, afraid of the vaccine, and they're not getting vaccinated. And they're part of that statistic of people that haven't gotten their vaccines. Now, honestly, I believe in vaccines. I believe in vaccines for myself. I do have the COVID as does my family. We all got the vaccine to protect ourselves. But when I had my, my children, I would give them all the vaccines the doctors recommended. Why? Because I saw what happened to some children that didn't have vaccines. It was not nice to see them get sick for no reason. And I'm saying for no reason because saying that you're afraid of the vaccine is not a reason. Saying that, oh, no, I know of a case of someone that got sick because of a vaccine. Well, maybe it's true. And a lot of the times it's not. A lot of the times it's people saying that it was a vaccine, but it wasn't. But let's say that it's true. Just like in the case of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, eight women in eight million people had blood clots. The U.S. is so responsible that they immediately stopped the vaccines from being distributed, the Johnson & Johnson, while they investigated. 
And when they did the investigation, they said eight persons, which seem to be linked to the vaccine, in eight million people, the vaccine will help many, many more than eight persons. Because the vaccine will protect well over, I mean, 80%, 90%. Of the 8 million people. Now, you might say, but I don't want to be one of those eight persons. I agree. So what the city said and government said and the state and the federal and everybody else, if you get the Johnson & Johnson, just be alert for any symptoms of a blood clot. Because we're human beings, and especially when you are, uh, when you're past, I'd say 30, you can have blood clots. Blood clots can come from many things. And every time you have a black and blue, it's a blood clot in your skin because you hit yourself or something. So fear, hate, be careful with them because they interfere with you and me taking care of ourselves. I like taking care of myself. And I've learned. I know that when I was young, sometimes, boy, hate would come to me. I would be, I would be a pain in, yeah, you know where. But then I realized I was making mistakes. Now I think things through. And I speak to people like I'm speaking to you. As a democratic leader, I tell people, okay, you want this. Let's figure out how to get it. Because a lot of times people say, I want this, but they make a mistake in how they want it to happen. I mean, they, they say, no guns, make a law. Okay, we've got a law, no guns in New York City. But the problem is many neighbors, many family members are hiding the fact that somebody in their household has a gun. They might do it because they're afraid. They might do it because they feel that they don't want their family member to go to jail. It's an unfair system. But in truth, there's a gun. If it's in your household, you should be worried. I mean, you're, you're probably already afraid, but you should do something. And there are ways of figuring things out. Now, will it be easy? No, nope. because the person that has a gun is afraid they have the gun in theory to protect themselves. But <laughs> come on, sometimes you've got it to protect yourself, but you get angry, you get afraid, and you pull it out and you make a mistake. The same with hate crimes. Hate crimes are unacceptable. Just because somebody's different, no way. Our Asian community has no reason to be persecuted. Just like there was no reason to push me, make fun of me, criticize me, and many of my friends, just because we were immigrants. Not acceptable. And because your skin color is different, no unacceptable. Oh, because you have a belief that's different than everybody else's? your religion, your identity, your gender. No, we are all equal, not just under the law. We are equal, we are all, besides the fact that we are all one, because as one community, what happens to any of you affects me. We have to understand that hate and fear both is something we should not be living by. If you're living by hate or by fear, it's unacceptable because we're here to help each other. We're here to create a better community. We're here to create a better city. And to do that, we have to think and we have to support leaders who think, not the ones who are screaming for vengeance, not the ones who are making demands, telling you that 
they will solve this problem that you are living. Look for someone that's not screaming or not saying things or not going to court. Going to court is important sometimes. But I found that when you go to court, the lawyers are the ones that are making money. And the rest of us, we live with the consequences. And hey, what can we do? Well, we live with the consequences because sometimes we have to go to court. Very important. If you're living by hate, you're living by fear, think about it. If you're letting somebody else teach you to hate or to fear, I'd say think about it. Be young, be older. I mean, hey, uh, we still have a life to live, and we are equal under the law. And guys, <laughs> fear and hate don't let us be equal. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'll be back with you next Monday, 7 p.m., with The Manny Perez Show, with Manny Manuel Perez, here to serve, and Julio and America TV Productions, who helped me make this program. Thank you very much, and have a good one. Thank you for joining us on The Manny Perez Show the show that covers, works on, and solves our community's issues. Yes, we can. The Manny Perez Show. 